John Delicio here. This is part two of restoration. Say restoration is my destination. Restoration means better than new. Better than new. All right. Let me go back. If you didn't watch part one, you need to watch part one first. And I'll tell you how we got here. And I was in the horse racing business. I loved it. God tells me to leave the horse racing business, move to Florida. I ended up in Daytona Beach in the restaurant business with two restaurants. And I started attending Calvary Assembly of God. And this, this was in the 70s. So now you know I'm pushing 39. This was in the 70s. Roy Harland was the pastor. And he was known as, he's in heaven now, but he was known as one of the world's best Bible teachers. He said, I don't know if I'm a teacher or a preacher. So he called himself a preacher. <laughs> Not a creature, a preacher. But he was a expert in eschatology. And every Sunday night, he taught on the book of Revelations. And one Sunday night, he came out and he said, I know you expected me to teach on the book of Revelations tonight, but we have a young man here from Canada and has a healing anointing. So we're going to have a healing service. And I thought to myself, what's a healing service? I had some physical issues. I was... 40-something years younger, maybe 45 years younger, I'm not sure. But I had some issues. I was racing horses, and it's dangerous. And I had some horse race accidents that affected my body. I was on my way to Canada on that motorcycle that you're seeing right there and had a very bad motorcycle accident and some other issues. So I had all the riders, I had gout, I was paying all the time, and the minister's name was Benny Hinn. It was, to my knowledge, his very first service that he had in, he might have had a service up in Buffalo, New York before that, but it was the beginning of his ministry in Florida, and it was his very first healing service in, the, in Florida and the Orlando region. He said, during the healing part of the service, he said, any of you that have arthritis, stand. When I stood, the power of God went through me like electricity. I never experienced anything like that. There's a lot more to it and why it meant so much to me but I got healed, not only then from arthritis, but everything else that I was going through at that time. And I believe at that time there was also an impartation of the healing anointing on my life. That was quite a few years ago. Then he asked me to get involved with this ministry. So I started working with Benny, there was only two of us. And I started traveling with him and driving him to services and meetings here, there, and everywhere. I became his executive assistant. I believe it was in 83 when we started the church in Orlando. We rented a building, I think it was the Youth for Christ building on Gore Street. And the church's name at that time was Miracle Life Center. A little bit later, we bought a piece of property and built the building on Forest City Road and the church is there today. And Benny Hinn's daughter and son-in-law uh, have a lot of meetings there at the time of this recording. And their ministry is called Jesus Image. And so, the day came, I had now, I told you on part one I had the restaurant business, but now I'm also in the fishing business and I had two fishing stores. I was part of a fishing magazine, a fishing law company. And I had, one of the stores was 24 hours, but I was also doing ministry. And uh, it was time for me to go on full-time staff with Benning. 
I went away and prayed and fasted for three days. I went into a closet and prayed and fasted three days. I came out of that room and I laid on the bed because I knew I prayed through. Oh, what I was praying about was what to do with the businesses. My plan was I had one of the stores had a partner, so I was going to give the store to them. I wanted to keep the other store because it had a house that I lived in also next door. But God spoke to me and said, for what I have for you to do, you cannot serve two masters. Get rid of the store. So that happened with that. But while I was in that hotel room, it was on the Lakeside Inn in Mount Dora, Florida, I was laying on the bed, looking to the back of the television because I turned it around when I walked into the room. And my head rolled to the right. There was a picture of a beautiful house that looked restored. I felt drawn to that picture. I got up and I'm looking at the picture and God said this to me. It's no accident that I brought you to a place that's being restored. It's no accident you're looking at a picture of a house that has been restored. He said, I have given you a ministry of restoration. He said, many can build, but few can restore. I know that I have a ministry of restoration and it's helped a lot of people and now we're in a process of restoration and promotion Ourself. So while I was there on staff with Benny, this is in like the early 80s now, while I was there on staff with Benny at Orlando Christian Center, his executive assistant for his ministry, but associate pastor, and not only associate pastor, I was the director of pastoral care, which meant there was a lot of responsibility and oversight and wonderful opportunities of learning that I had with the ministry. It was a real blessing to me. I loved it. I loved it. I was very, very, let me get comfortable with you here. I was very happy because I knew I had a call of God in my life and now I'm fulfilling my call. Benny had a very big ministry a very large church. I had a lot of responsibility. I loved working with him. He loved me working with him. I was happy. But I started getting these prophecies from renowned prophets, men and women of God, lots of them. But before that, I was traveling with Benny to a Christian retreat in Bradenton, Florida, and around 1980. And while we were walking down the sidewalk, God spoke to me and said these words, stay close to this ministry. It has to do with your future. So I knew I was where God wanted me to be, and God told me to stay close to this ministry. It had to do with my future. Later on, I found out it was not only with Benny his ministry, but the ministry there at Gospel Christian Retreat, because I ended up getting ordained with Gospel Crusade uh, there also. Some time goes by. It's in the early 80s. I'll be getting these prophecies. Renowned member and woman of God. You would know them. I'm not going to put their name on here, but if you want to know who they are, email me if you need more detail. And this is what they all said. John, you have a mindset. You think you're going to be doing this the rest of your life but God has more for you. And I thought to them myself, you missed it. I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm happy doing it. And you're telling me God has more for me. I, what could be more than this, what I was doing? What could be more than being Benny Hens, executive assistant, associate pastor, and director of pit? What could be more? No, you guys missed it. But renowned men and women of God that many of you would know, many of them is in heaven now. They all said the same thing. John, you have a mindset. You think you're going to be doing this the rest of your life, but God has more for you. I fought it because I was very happy doing what I was doing. But then I had a spiritual experience at three o'clock in the morning 
I don't want to take time to get into that. I heard a man dragging chains in my house. And I don't want to, that's on another video. I'll tell you about that too if you want to ask me. And God spoke to me clearly that he had something else for me to do. I started to talk to Benny for about a year. We knew that I was in some type of transition, but wasn't sure what it was until a church in Sebring, Florida opened up and lots of other doors also, many. But then one of the renowned prophets, he's a prophet bishop now, I was ordained by his ministry also. He said this to me, John, God is taking you out of Orlando to bring you back to Orlando. Now I had two little stepchildren that I was raising. That I was raising. The mother had a lot going on and I was raising these two little children. And this prophet gave me these word, this word. They were little kids, very young, little, little boy and a little girl. A renowned prophet of God said to me, John, God's taken you out of Orlando to bring you back to Orlando. He said, you will homeschool the children and you will go from state to state, nation to nation, proclaiming the gospel. And while you're out of Orlando, there's going to be a lot of changes made. I don't want to tell you what those changes are because I'd have to mention people's names. He said, but basically the drift of the prophet John, God's taking you out of Orlando to bring you back to Orlando. You will homeschool the children and you will go from state to state, nation to nation, proclaiming the gospel. While you're gone, there's going to be a lot of changes in Orlando. And the fact that you would survive in Orlando is a miracle of God. He said, we're a prophetic ministry. Some years ago, we planted a church in Orlando and the Jezebel spirit destroyed it. He said, there's such a strong Jezebel spirit of Orlando. It destroys every prophetic ministry that God raises up in Orlando. But for you to be surviving Orlando is a miracle. I wasn't even in Orlando. He said, God was taking me out of Orlando. He was prophesying me back in. And he said this, God will bring you back to Orlando to do a great work from him, for him. And from Orlando, you will touch the world. That's why we're meeting right here where we are right now. That word came to pass. God opened door after door after door. I preach in almost every denominational and non-denominational type of church that you know. Assembly of God, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy. I never knew there were so many Church of Gods. There's the First Church of God, the Second Church of God, the Church of God of Prophecy, the, church, the Holiness. I preached in so many of them almost every night. And the word that came to pass, me and the kids were traveling, and I was homeschooling them. He was right on. And God opened up so many doors, and that's when he birthed our radio and television ministry around the world. But going out and traveling here, I was preaching over 500 services a year for many years. And do you know what message God gave me that opened many of those doors? It was a teaching that I did, a 12 cassette tape teaching called Freedom from the Jezebel Influence. So many pastors wanted me to come and teach that at their church because the Jezebel spirit tries to kill every true prophetic minister or ministry. We'll teach that at another time. That came to pass. The time came when it was time to settle down. And when I put the kids back in school, they were, they were years ahead. I was concerned about if I was doing this right. I mean, it was the principal and their pastor and their stepfather. And I was concerned, you know, am I doing a good job with this? Because they had to take tests and all. 
When we put the kids back in school, the son's name was Chip, I got a call from the principal. Oh, no, I got a call from the, the, the school and said the principal wanted to talk to me. I said, is there a problem? They said, there's a problem with your son, Chip. I said, well, how could there be a problem with Chip? He only even, even talks. He's a good kid. Went to the school and talked to the principal. Ryan ended up going to that same school, I think. Or maybe his mother was on Hiawassee, that school there, the Christian school. I went and talked to the principal. And I said, uh, I understand you have a problem with my son. He said, yes. I said, what kind of a problem could you have with him? He's a good kid. And you know what the principal said? You were homeschooling him, weren't you? I said, oh no, here it comes. I said, yes. He said, here's the problem. Chip is so far ahead of the other kids in his class, we're afraid he's going to get bored. I said, is that why you called me to tell me that? You may not sound like there was something wrong with him. You scared me with the homeschooling thing. He said, no, Chip is so far ahead. I said, so what, what do you want to do? He said, we want to promote him. I said, so you want to promote him another grade? He said, no, we want to promote him two grades. I was a good principal. I am a good teacher. Not as good a teacher as Manny. Manny back there, is a, he's got the patience to put up with everybody except one guy he told me to get out of his life. He's got, <laughs> he's, Manny's got, Manny taught this in college. He taught this in, in colleges, editing and production and everything. He's an amazing teacher. So we are in a series of videos called Restoration means better than new. This is part two. On your screen, you're seeing a post office box address. Take a screenshot of it if you'd like to support this matter. All of our friends and partners should. And then you're saying an address for PayPal. And then you see an address for Cash App if you like to support the ministry. But I'm going to talk more about that in a couple of programs down the road. Are you getting anything? Are we learning anything? What have you learned so far? Restoration is better than new. Restoration means better than new. And um, God said that to me. He said, I have given you a ministry of restoration. He said, many can build, but few can restore. I thought about that. It's easier to knock a building down and start over than to fix an old one up. And it costs a lot more. And you have to have a lot more patience. I guess I do have some patience. All right. I want you to pick this up on part three, but make sure you watch. This is part two. Watch part one. And this is part two. Watch part three.